In this video, we're going to install and configure the MetaMask Chrome extension. We're going to use this extension to interact with not only the Ethereum network, but it's also going to be used by the different applications that we create as kind of a portal for our users to somehow send money or store data or do whatever it else is that we require. So let's walk through, through the installation process. I'm inside of my Chrome browser. Remember, right now, you really need to be running Chrome. There's one or two other browsers that work with MetaMask, but for right now, I'm gonna show you the directions with Chrome. Inside of Chrome, I'm gonna open up a new tab, and then I'm going to find the web store. So here's web store right here. From the web store, we're going to search for the words MetaMask, like so. We should see it being one of the first results here, and you can recognize it by the little fox icon that they like to use. I'll click Add to Chrome on the right-hand side, and then Add Extension on the window that pops up. The extension itself is very small, so it should install itself very quickly. I'm going to close the two windows that we were just working with. You'll now see a new icon to the right of your URL bar inside of your browser. If we click it, that'll open up the MetaMask UI. The first thing we get prompted with is a couple of privacy notices, and terms of use and all this good stuff. So we'll scroll through it. If you want to, you could certainly read it. Once we go through both of those, we then get prompted to enter a new password. By entering a password right here, we are creating a new Ethereum account. This account will allow us to send and receive money, and it will also in the future allow us to deploy smart contracts that we create. We're going to be creating several accounts throughout this course. So this is just going to be the first of many accounts we create. You can go ahead and enter a password here, and we'll click on Create. So I'm going to enter a password, and I'll click Create. When we click Create, we are told that something called a vault is created, and then we get what is called a mnemonic right here. So these are 12 words that form a mnemonic. We'll talk more about exactly what this mnemonic is for later on, if you want to, you can copy the mnemonic somewhere else and save it. We will, like I said, be creating many other accounts throughout the course, so you don't have to save this just yet if you don't want to. So I'm gonna say, okay, I've copied it, whatever. After that, we come to the main screen of MetaMask, and we're gonna get a lot of experience at this screen. At the top left-hand side, you'll find a dropdown that says Main Network. So remember, just a moment ago, we were talking about how there are many different Ethereum networks out there. The first network that is selected by default up here is the main network. The main network is the public production network. It's where coins are actually worth something, and it's where we deploy real applications that we want to be used by our users. If we click on this, we can see a dropdown that also shows us several other available networks. The three networks underneath main, so Robston, Coven, and Rinkby, are all test networks. These networks are used to test code and to get free ether to test our contracts with. We're going to eventually be doing a lot of work with the Rinkby network down here. So this is where we are going to be deploying a lot of test contracts that we write, and we'll also use it for a lot of other purposes as well. We're gonna do very little with the main Ethereum network just because the vast majority of stuff that happens on the main Ethereum network costs actual money. And of course, during the development process, we don't wanna spend any real money. We wanna work with fake money, money that doesn't really matter at all. So that's why we are going to be using Rinkby. Below that, you'll also find an option for localhost 8545. This is an option to connect to your local machine, so your own personal desktop or laptop. We usually use localhost 8545 when we're hosting a local Ethereum node or a local Ethereum test network. Many times development is done on local networks, so we would be using localhost 8545 down here. But like I said, you and I are going to be using Rinkby a lot rather than using our own local node. And there are some very, very good reasons for that that we'll iterate later on in the course. The last option that you'll find on here is for a custom RPC. This essentially allows us to connect to some remote network at some custom address. 
we won't be using custom RPC too much in this course. So for right now, I'm going to select Rink B, because that's the network that we're going to be dealing with quite a bit throughout this course. All right, let's take a pause right here. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the other information that's available inside of MetaMask, and then we will use MetaMask to actually send and receive some tokens. So quick break, and I'll see you in just a minute.